halfway through uh, one, one yeah. chapter. Yeah. Uzi, yes. <laughs> I was saying, so this, uh, I said, this is uh, this uh, fudging of accounts to get a license, that's fraud. So I can make a case. And so I wrote a letter to the Prime Minister uh, explaining that uh, this fraud has taken place and the minister has cleared it, knowing fully well, and he ought to have known. Uh, therefore, uh, please give me permission to prosecute Raja. Now, under the
everybody should be given, uh, should be allowed to apply. And if there are too many people and not enough spectrum, then of course the market price will decide. In effect, you should auction. But Raja had other ideas. So he does, he said, first he said all apply. He started applying in slow pace. You know, you know, we can get any time, so let us do it after Diwali, that sort of thing. Then one day he announces uh, on the 25th of September 2007, he announces that all those who apply before 1st October only, they will be considered. So a big rush, you know, in those five days. So 575 applications came. All right, after that, uh, on the uh, 10th of January, he issues a press release which says two things are said. That it has now been decided. Now, you see, all the applications are in, the, the cutoff date is uh, 1st October is over, and now we are into January. He says, all those, as a first step, all those who applied before or on or before 25th September, only their application will be considered first. And all those who applied between 25th September and 1st October will have to wait whenever. Never. So that's totally illegal. The, uh, somebody, one of the people who was denied a license who had applied between 25th and 1st went to court. And the government applied every bloody trick. They, take, they canceled every license of his. They cut his electricity off. They cut his water off. That fellow said, Mark Karo. <laughs> and he withdrew his petition. So there was very thuggery going on. And uh, then Chidambaram and Raja, we came to know about Chidambaram later. But because Raja is, uh, you know, the ministry, so we thought he's responsible. Chidamaram and Raja were empowered by a cabinet decision of, uh, that is, finance minister and telecom minister were empowered to decide the price. And the two of them decided the price we shall charge for spectrum is what was charged for spectrum in 2001. At that time, there were only four crores mobile phones in India. In 2008, it was 70 crores. And there was such a lot of people wanting to come. Because the market is so large. So they, that means the price in 2008, it turned out, was 10 times the price of 2001. So he was giving spectrum at one tenth the market price. And that's how CAG calculated that had we sold it at 2008 prices. We would have got 1,76,000 crores more. And had we auctioned it, we would have got even more. That does not make the newspapers. Can, can I argue counter argument? Yeah, please, please. Yeah. Company is claiming we developed it in the last eight years. That's why it's so valuable. At that time, the value was not that high. Uh, how, what is, is that not? Listen, the first principle is the companies can pay a thousand things. You have a scarce resource, you have to allocate it. What, how do I allocate it? You know, somebody can't come and say, I develop petrol technology, therefore I should get uh, petrol free. No. You have to do what is what the market... But it should have gone to the bidding. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they may have developed uh, telecom for 1G, but... Uh, yeah, uh, not for 2G. So, anyway, there is not an argument tenable in economics at all. If there is a scarce resource which has to be allocated, it should be allocated at the price which the market can bear. So, uh, so anyway, uh, that argument was made by the way. I shot it down in the court. Uh, so, I am not worried that you might come and become the advocate for Raja. <laughs> No, I'm taking their position. No, no, I am. Sam. We are playing devil's advocate yeah. and they are all devils anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
So the um, uh, one lakh seventy six thousand. No. Raja ensured that of the nine people who ultimately qualified, five seventy five, which applications were made for different parts of the country, uh, the number of companies who were applied to one hundred and twenty four. One hundred twenty four companies made uh, a sum total of. Uh, Uh, you know what is called a circle wise five seventy five applications originally, and so you whittled it down to nine companies and one twenty two applications. And then there's the ICA. Now uh, these nine companies, he made sure that uh, two of them are his special friends, and those two are Swan Real Estate Company. Which uh, Ambani is very coolly renamed it as uh, Swan Telecom, but he didn't have a single tower, he had no equipment, nothing. Yeah, you know, so it was not a telecom company. He renamed it, and another company which didn't even bother to rename itself, and that was called Unitech. It was a Delhi-based uh, uh, real estate company. Which uh, in which uh, uh, Sonia Gandhi's son-in-law owns 20% of the shares, not in his name, but Badra Badra. Uh, so these two companies had to be given a license. First of all, they are not telecom companies, not qualified. Second, they not only uh, had the demand drop to predate it. We had three V two information, but they were sitting in uh, uh, Raja's room when this press release went out. And that's a historical fact. Yeah, it's been proved now. The the private secretary has confirmed this. Uh, not uh, the Sachari has uh, gone on uh, before the court and made a deposition. So I mean, he has courage enough to do that. Uh, crooks also Tamil, heroes also Tamil. <laughs> so um, uh, uh, they were sitting there, and as soon as the press release went uh, and the three thirty came, uh, Raja asked his private secretary, Chandolia, please take these two people and get them their license. So uh, they got their license. Now, having got the license, uh, these two knew that they can't run a telecom. So they sold their shares. These people call it dilution and all that, but they sold their shares, controlling shares, to two companies, uh, foreign companies, called Eti Salat and Telenor. The question is why Eti Salat and Telenor didn't directly apply? Yes. Because there was a Home Ministry of Advisory. That AT Salat and Telenor should not be allowed to have any business in India because they are threat to India's national security. AT Salat because it is a front company for ISI, and AT Salat's uh, India company, uh, AT Salat DB, the MD is called Shahid Balwas, and he is Daud Ibrahim's right hand man. And that if they are allowed to. Uh, Do any business in India? They will use that to infiltrate the outs, men, terrorists, etc. And they said uh, Telenor is a uh, Norwegian-owned company, but Telenor buys equipment from Chinese military, People's Liberation Army, and Chinese Liberation Army telecom equipment are all which can double for cyber warfare. And if India and China have a conflict, and these people put towers all over India, they can wreck the defense ministry, armed forces, computers, companies. So this should not be allowed. So they cannot apply. So by this route they came. In. Can that be revoked now? Or? Uh huh. No, that too. They're anxious to know. Yes, yeah, that boy. Then the other seven companies also said, "Well, you know, 
and they sold it for eight times the price they paid eight, eight, eight times. The license was worth ten times, but they sold it for eight times. That means 1650 multiplied by eight about uh, 15,000, 16,000 crores. Now, uh, then Tata said, well, we'll also sell. They sold to Docomo. Uh, they didn't sell controlling shares, but they sold sufficiently, I think 46%. And uh, uh, which means, of course, with, if you have more than 25%, 24%, then no extraordinary general body meeting can take place. So, uh, Tata got 13 times. Because Tata is an established company. Even though market price is only 10 times, but uh, discounting for the future, uh, uh, Tata's got uh, 13 times. Then Shiv Shankar got air cell, they also got. But uh, air cell was in a, in a problem because by then, in a previous license they had got, uh, Dani Di Maru was uh, minister. minister. And he forced them to sell it sell air cell to a Malaysian industrialist by name uh, uh, by name uh, uh, Anand Krishna, who was known to have built his entire business on the narcotics money of the LTT. The Sri Lankan Tamil, but his father came as a plantation man and he made all his money by fraud. He became a giant. Then uh, this, therefore, uh, uh, Shiv Shankaran wanted uh, this license now to be first in the name of a new company called Estel. Um, but uh, as I told you, they used the sledgehammer, so he backed off. And he remained as Estel, no foreign company. And then uh, others also, now Videocon is uh, under the scanner. Yeah. They, had, they created a new company called Loop, which was really owned by Ruyas. Ruyas already had a license, which they sold to Vodafone. So, I mean, the, all these nine are in some way or the other in trouble. So, I went and uh, filed a case, in, an additional case in the Supreme Court. Uh, saying that, uh, you know, uh, all these licenses should be cancelled. And the court heard me in great length. All the nine telecom companies also argued against me. And the court has reserved judgment. I'm expecting a judgment any time. I'm hoping that the license will be all cancelled. Because one uh, company, uh, Eti Salat uh, representative, ironically, his group vice president had come and he was my student at Harvard. <laughs> so I told him, no hard feelings, I'm only after Sonia Gandhi. You give me your bank account, I'll let you go. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, 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 if that happens, it will have a very salutary effect. Then you auction it. Is Elinor and Elie Salat, where are they operating right They're all over India. You can go, uh, it will be, uh, they are known in India as Uninol. You go to any place, any village in Madhya Pradesh will be there. All over India they are. So our defense department is not concerned about this one because... Because they were concerned, they, the Home Ministry issued an uh, yeah. advisory, you ignored it. But then can they stop it then? Who? Oh, I will to ask for the cancellation. Yeah, but it is taking too long. Yeah, thank you. Long, long. But what do you do? <laughs> national security, you know. But yeah. it's a concern from yes, the security. National security. Point of view. I have argued the matter. The court has to give a judgment, and uh, the argumentation was completed on in a on April. In April, so they are taking a long time. But they have to write a very good judgment. But the judges are they No. <laughs> <laughs> if Raja would be in jail today. See, in India, it's not enough not to be corrupt. You must have the backing of your colleagues. We have got a new Chief Justice called Kapadia, who is supposed to be extremely honest. But these Chief Justices are appointed in India by who? By the government. 
senior most judges. Senior most judges. Senior most judges. They are not elected unlike in the United States. They are not elected in the Supreme Court. Not in the Supreme Court, but at the local level. India, local level also is not elected. The Supreme Court judge now, Chief Justice, is Reddy or something? No, no, no. Chief Justice is Kapadia. He's a Parsi. What is the span of his tenure now? End of 2013. Well, it's not like that. Stop. That will be renewed, right? No, no, no. Retired. When is it supposed to be retired? End of 2013. So how is his reputation in terms of honesty? Of Kapadia. For the best we have had of any Chief Justice. Correct. You could find me. Yes. That's correct. You do your duty. Yeah. And these things happen according to his wishes. Yeah, one more thing, you know, I hear many times, is the remote control is bad than for Sonia Gandhi. So, you know, there is... No, not remote control. No, no, no. no. Uh, it is direct control. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, he's a, he's a kind of hurtful to the nation. Oh. Right? No, why? You mean you are concerned about the nation? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he is not a citizen, so <laughs> No, no, even a here in U.S. <coughs> it has taken a long time to people to know even few basic facts about Sonia Gandhi. She claimed in an affidavit as a candidate for Lok Sabha that she got a degree from the University of Cambridge. By chance I had gone to the University of Cambridge to give a lecture. And I asked them at dinner time, is Sonia Gandhi your alumni? They said, no, no. She was here uh, in, uh, working as a waitress in a local restaurant and she didn't know any English because she came from Italy. So there were these teaching shops where well, she learned English, that's all. I mean, you have in Delhi also such a deva, tutorial, you know, like that, you know. So I said, can a letter be given to me that there was no such student called either Antonia Maino or Edvige Maino, she has a number of names. Uh, it gave all the name variants. So they gave all the name variants and gave me a letter. There was never any such thing. They actually gave you the letter. They gave me the letter. And you published a letter. Of course, I published it on my website. You go to jantabadi.com. You go to jantabadi.com. Oh, you didn't have to have it. It didn't have to have it. It didn't have to have it, but it has not been decisive. Because the only person who is raising it is myself. I went to uh, the speaker of Lok Sabha, he said, here is this letter and this, this woman is saying in her bio data, in the parliamentary records, and she's already said it in an affidavit, uh, uh, that, she's, uh, that she's committed perjury, therefore. And so please do something, the speaker at that time when the NDA was in power, uh, the speaker was Manohar Joshi, a very good friend of mine. He said, Baba, Paj Bhai to manega. I said, you're a speaker, what bye bye got to do with it? Then I flew to Bombay, met Bal Thakre, who's a good, good friend of mine. He told me, Kya ora, no, what is this happening? And then he picked up the phone and fired this uh, Manoj Joshi. Well, so I was only saying, send this letter to Sonia Gandhi for a answer. So when I came back here, I sent it to her. So a reply comes saying that it was a typing mistake. Typing mistake in the affidavit. Typo. So now she agrees that she was not. Yeah, she agrees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She agrees. She agrees. Then I said, listen, I told the speaker, typing mistake. In the comma, full stop. Right. Spirit. You can't have a whole sentence. Educated in the University of Cambridge and obtained a degree in English. Can't be a whole thing. Can't be a typing mistake. When you brought the case, there was also parliament, uh, they were going through another procedure. You advised them not to go that route, follow your route. Am I correct? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. JPC. Okay. Yeah, because they are pursuing the other route. Yeah, they are. But anyway, they are? it doesn't matter. But yeah. by then, the, uh, I mean, that's a different issue. Yeah. So uh, I said to the speaker, how can this be a typing mistake? Otherwise, ask her to send it to the Guinness Book of World Records. It's the longest typing mistake in history. <laughs> <laughs>
Otherwise, people will not believe that I am I am in Janata Party and not uh, working for BJP. So it is politics. It is politics. Politics is essential part. You, you are discussing politics. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we are not such a smart. We would talk about uh, uh, I mean, for Mother India. Don't you think that all the forces should come together? No, that, that part I agree. I am. I am. No, no. I am coming to that. So. What happened is that we, in 2005, uh, I was campaigning. I was all single-handedly campaigning against the arrest of uh, Shankaracharya of Kanchi, the murder charge. And so, Vishwanath Parishad, uh, Ashok Signal became very emotional. He said, "Swami Thapnaad me hai isko dubara sab saath jodna chahiye." That time, uh, RSS chief was uh, uh, Sudarshan. So he called me for breakfast. He told me, "After that, I go. Now, what is the difficulty? Let's join together." I am ready. But I said, "By by before by by, Jani ke pehle he has infected the party leadership with all Sonia Sonia's people. This Jetli, Sushma, Anand Kumar, Ankay Naidu, Advani. All five are dead scared of Sonia Gandhi. Dead scared. You saw Advani. He has apologized for." One party report. Yeah, yeah, right. He should have said, "I will forward your letter to the committee and ask them to examine." Oh, why, why are they scared? Yeah, wrong, done, wrong things. Wrong things. Yeah. Fights. Their buttons are in their hands. Yeah. That's so I happen. said, "Ye hone ke baad the matter. Let me be in the party for the time being, and I'm ready to have an electoral alliance with the BJP. So till you clean up this." What is the use of having power and then protecting Sonia Gandhi? Why have I protected Sonia Gandhi uh, all through when I was fighting cases against her for antique smuggling, for KGB money, you know, all sorts of things? They were the the, the government councils were opposing me. And even the Chief Justice one day was sitting next to me, the Delhi High Court Chief Justice on B C Patel was sitting next to me on a flight. He was asking me, "I क्या है मैं समझ में नहीं आती, you know." The, uh, both BJP and uh, Congress are opposing you. You know, on for Sonia Gandhi. Therefore, you must be wrong. <laughs> Therefore, I must be wrong. I mean, as an indirect way of <laughs> telling me. So he would. He knew that I was in the right. So he never wouldn't decide. He said, "Oh, BJP ko thora patalo." He said, "Man, kya patalunga?" I asked Jetli one day, "Kya kar rahe ho tum log?" So he said, "Oh, uh, Bajpayee's orders." Rahul Gandhi was caught in uh, Boston airport. I don't know you people know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who let him? Uh, let See, him. Uh, the whole thing is we get so many emails. We do not know whether these are truth or not. Truth yeah. or not. So, but this is true that he had 150,000 dollars in cash. 150,000. 60,000 cash. Rahul Gandhi. Rahul Gandhi. Rahul Gandhi. And he was caught by FBI in the because obviously they got a tip off. He must have drawn some big amount in one blow. And so these things, you know, float around. And uh, so the FBI caught him in Boston Logan Airport. He was on his way to Columbia with his girlfriend, uh, ex now ex girlfriend. Uh, and uh, the words he went. Then uh, Sonia went running to Vajpai. Vajpai called up uh, Pandey Sir Rice. Pandey Sir Rice brief to Bush. Bush told um, uh, FBI to get off. But the FBI said no. Will not get off. <laughs> Who are you? You no, know, Americans are not vertical, pyramidical. They are, you know, like uh, they are the right uh, yeah, step. Yeah, very where, uh, very where it is by authority, you are no bloody. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the president of the United States writes to uh, the U.S. Embassy saying, "Falana man should get a visa." They will say, "Who the hell are you?" you know? So they, so they fought and fought. Finally, the uh, the FBI Mullen or whoever it was that time. He said uh, that if Rahul gives in writing, that whenever CBI, uh, FBI wants him, he will come to the United States. Then we we'll let him go on his bond, uh, oral bond. So he is uh, the case is registered. And the case is not decided yet. There, it doesn't. It's <laughs> lying in cold storage, and it suits them also because Sonia Gandhi doesn't dare to oppose the Americans because this and that. Uh, Oil for food program also Saddam Hussein, where she got a lot of money from Saddam Hussein. 
So the, the uh, so he protected us. Is he being a gentleman or a <laughs> he is, now see what he says. He says that isn't it great danger to the nation that she's a uh, front person for the Vatican and now you are saying be a gentleman with her? <laughs> you can't make omelets without breaking eggs, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I feel the present government is going to fall in a matter of time, six months maybe. Uh, because of everything is closing I do not know that. No, no I do not know that. Baba Ramdev is doing the effort, but you know, whole public is yeah. not his opposition to the government, but I don't know. No, no, see, there, 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 Ramdev and I are in close touch. Uh, recently, I spoke to him a few days ago. And uh, you know that the only politician who was invited for the breaking of his past was my son. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, yes. All the apologies are made to sit in uh, the circuit house. And I didn't even want to go. He phoned me up. By chance, I was in Dera. Because I have an ancestral house there from my auntie. And so I just gone for two, three days to write something, you know, to be alone. And then I got a phone call. Turanta Ajayi. He said, Kya jaldi hai? He said, No, 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 no. It's going to happen. It's Balakrishnan, this man who is there trying to target. So I went running there, and uh, there was a huge turnout of uh, press and all that. I was taken in, and all the, uh, you know, Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, Babu Ram, uh, 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 you know, uh, what is it? Mopari Ha, Murari Babu, and all that. All were there. And they were urging him. So he saw me, he, he, he was very weak, he couldn't speak. So he, he grabbed my arm. So I told him, uh, Mahatma Gandhi invented this fast and good death. <laughs> But Mahatma Gandhi said that I will never fast against anyone in whose heart there is not a little place for me. So I said, the, the, these people want you to die. There is no place in their heart for you. Aap kya kar rahe so he didn't say anything. Then, then all these people quoted from Gita, this, that, everything. Finally he said, Jews love. When I came out, the entire media was there, all live. I said, Baba Ramdev is suffering there for India, and Sonia Gandhi is in Switzerland. And she was that time in Switzerland. With the some some financial advisors. Huh? Some financial advisors. Who? Who? Uh, Sonia. Sonia Gandhi. And financial advisors abroad. Yeah, with the 12 or 13 financial advisors were with her. No, no, no. no. no? no. Uh, it was she was only one man. His name was Mark Rich. You heard of him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's a fugitive from America. He, he, eh? No, he's, he's not, 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 anymore. not anymore, no. No, he, he got a pardon. He's he been pardoned. pardoned. He was pardoned by... Uh, he, was, uh, he had gone for 144 year uh, sentence and a billion dollars fine. And he uh, escaped to Switzerland. Then the... Uh, Clinton, last act of this. Show the news. The order thing news. Where does Narendra Modi fit into all of these so things? So what is his story? I'll finish this. Oh, That's a big question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, Ram Dev has got enormous public popularity. He's a very sincere, truthful person. But he's surrounded by non-political people and he has to deal with politicians. And the first thing Congress politicians say, keep all politicians out. And certainly, if they have to keep out one politician, congressman, they will mention my name. But now he is understood. So uh, when I go back, I will work with him. As far as Nazar is concerned, he's a man of great integrity, man of great uh, work sacrifice. But he is surrounded by left-wing uh, no. NGOs. <laughs> and they are all pro-Sonia. Aruna Roy, um, then that Mander, Harish Mander, they are all Sonia's people. They are also in her council. What is the national advisory yeah. 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 Indirectly, they are the agent minister. Yeah, yeah, they are the agent They are also. Anna Hajari is going to work. So on they on. are the ones who say non political. In fact, it is when Anna Hajari went on fast, uh, Kiran Devi called me up twice. Please come, Anna Hajari. I know Anna Hajari. I've been. MP 
the Lok Sabha MP from Bombay twice. So I know all of Maharashtra very well. So, um, I, but I said I can't come because they are making public statements, no politicians allowed, I can't come. And uh, he has to be brought out of that clutch. And he can come. I mean, I think he is he also will come out. Uh, I think so. He realizes that he is a yes. Then, RSS and Vishuddha Parishad are very essential because they have the organization. They got the dedicated workers. The workers can eat moonfully and work. So, if these Swamiji's and uh, RSS Vishuddha Parishad can combine, then we got an alternative. It doesn't matter if BJP is there or not. BJP is like a like an electric to, bulb, you know, the electricity is shut off, then it won't But you'll have to have a political front. Do you think there will be a new political front? No, you uh, clean up uh, BJP. And you think you can clean up that? I can't clean up. Only RSS can clean up. And, and where does Didi Ratamri fit into? Is she she's a great speaker, wonderful woman. So she, she's a broken hearted, that's why she's away. I have yeah, that was so hard. Can I ask a hypothetical question? Supposing uh, the present government there falls. There was question there. Huh? Yeah, the present government falls. Uh, say the NDA or something comes in within a year. Uh, how? Took, the choice, because the Congress, I look at all the numbers, last five no, years. No, no, how NDA comes in? Uh, it's an election process, a reaction. No, you are thinking the NDA is certain to be elected. I think so. No. Within a year, it's going to no, be. No, no, no. My question is two questions. One is, who is likely to be a prime minister? And two, <laughs> can, <laughs> they live, can they live with the local party? Don't believe you can ask an editor of a newspaper, not yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> because, so, so because in the last 30 years, if I look at all the people who have become prime ministers, I have never thought they'll ever become prime minister. Exactly. I never thought that Moraji will be prime minister. I never thought Challenge will be prime minister. I never thought Rajiv Gandhi will become prime minister, at least so soon. And I never thought that B.B. Singh would be Prime Minister. I never thought Chandrasekhar would be Prime Minister. I never thought Devagoda would be Prime Minister. Gujarat. I never thought Gujarat was used to be sitting in say, say, uh, India International Center drinking tea and he became Prime Minister in 80. You know? So, uh, how can I? Even Bajpai was a big surprise, but Bajpai was because of that uh, Ram movement, which he let down. Did. And in 19, uh, 2004, I never thought that Manmohan Singh would become Prime Minister. So why predict on this? <laughs> this is a weakness from the Nehru period, you know. After Nehru who? Oh, yeah. After Nehru who? Our whole country will collapse. And even at that time we had said that Ral Badu Shastri laughed at me. Are Ral Badu Shastri. In American politics you never hear after Bush who. Yeah. But in India it's a... The reason is people looking for stability, at least from outside of India. Not whether people, you are not people. <laughs> yeah. 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 You at least clear your mind. Yeah. Doesn't matter who becomes Prime Minister, somebody will become. Yeah. It does stability. <laughs> what? This stability is the stability of the grave. You don't want that. Mm -hmm. Swami, I know that time is running away. I think this portion was just pretty good. Yeah. About Narendra Modi. Yeah. Narendra Modi has done wonderful work as Chief Minister in Gujarat. Everywhere uh, it is now acknowledged that what he has done is a wonder. The only minus point against him is that he has bypassed the party, he has bypassed the Sangha and the Vishnu Parishad and all, and totally relied on this civil service to deliver goods, whom he has protected. And they have loyally worked. So he has got the massive support of the public in Gujarat. Uh, and uh, if that gets translated in as a propaganda that he, what he has done Gujarat into to the whole country, uh, certainly it will be a tremendous appeal. But whether he would be projected by the system that is developing, See, right now I see a mass movement emerging on corruption. And uh, the, the sadhus and this RSS, Vishnu Pichas, is going to be important factor in uh, deciding who will be the next one. And there he may lose out. I can't say. As I told you, I can't predict who will be the next one. 
destiny and is such a strange animal. You know, even if he doesn't really would want to come into national politics. That I don't know. You're not asking. <laughs> because no politician ever tells you what he wants to do. He is himself says, no, no, I am very satisfied with that. If you believe that, then you will not come. The perception we have about him is that he is not corrupt. Is that true? Absolutely. He is not corrupt at all. He has cleaned up corruption. But during elections, a lot of money is spent for You will see that you are mis- you are, you are, are corrupting. Also, no, no, you mean a lot of money is spent and therefore there is corruption? Uh, no, no, corrupting the mind. Oh, corrupting, but it didn't work in Tamil Nadu. Yeah, but... Uh, How much money they gave? In Andhra Pradesh it worked. It worked in Andhra Pradesh once, it worked in Tamil Nadu for the last twenty years. But then one issue came <laughs> and people threw out, they took uh, uh, DMK money. And voted against DMK. See, that, that is how people should be educated. <coughs> no, no, no is. need to educate. Our people are already <laughs> smart. <laughs> so so our people, people are very smart people. So how about Narendra Modi? Whether their calculus is something you appreciate or not, you know, I can't say. But they, they think, who should I vote for? And they make up a mind. Sometimes they make the decision wrongly, make it on caste basis, language basis, sometimes by newspapers, you know. But uh, the fact of the matter is that the Indian voter is a thinking voter. There was one the problem in 2009 election, Congress had actually lost. But this electronic voting machine gave her 90 extra seats. Chidamaram had lost completely. They called up the returning officer, we shoot you if you don't give, uh, and he was Home Minister at that time, if you don't give us the victory certificate. So that fellow was shivering and he gave it. That's a scandal. But in this case, in uh, electronic vote, so I went to, I, I, that's why I didn't contest the election last time, uh, because I knew this was going to take place. So I went to this high court and they said that uh, we should scrap uh, this electronic voting machine, go back to ballot papers. Yeah. Britain has ballot papers, America is slowly returning to, I mean, they had only sectional places where they had electronic machines. But then the Bush election showed that is what they do. Yeah. So they're going back. Japan is. Yeah, yeah, because Very they have quick. a microcontroller there, you can change that. That's right. yeah, and the microcontroller is not produced in India, it's produced by the Japanese. <laughs> I asked the Japanese company, do you use it in Japan? He said, no, because we don't use electronic voting machines yeah. in our country. <laughs> so why? It's because it can be rigged. <laughs> <laughs> they were very frank with me. I got a court case. The final hearing is coming on 17th August. The court asked me, is there any one way? Because there are some advantages of the electronic voting machine. Is there any one way you will be satisfied by using, by amending this machine? So I said one way, and that is you give me a voter receipt. I press the button, the voter receipt comes out, you voted for so and so. And then I tear that voter receipt and put it in a box. Because if I take it outside, some gulda will catch hold of me and say, show who you voted for. So we just put it in a box. And that box should be sealed. And if there is a dispute, uh, you don't you don't run the same machine as you are doing it now. But you go and count it. And that has been accepted by the election commission. The only issue left is that microcontroller should be produced in India. Uh, otherwise, you know, you go back to ballot papers. So the election commission is squirming on that. Voter receipt, you know, surprisingly, I got it because uh, the Indian Int- Information Technology Act, the Information Technology Act is called, passed in 2000, says that any computer, if you feed something, if any person feeds something into it, then he's entitled to a receipt. So, therefore, uh, if I'm feeding my vote into it, I should get a receipt. First, the election commission says, no, no, these laws don't apply to us. Then I produce a Supreme Court judgment to show that election commission has freedom of action only where laws have not been passed. Otherwise, they are subject to the laws of the country. So, when there is some area where there is no law passed, then they can do what they like. So, the, the, once that is over, then I am sure that Congress won't be 
In New York State, we have a, although it's an electronic machine, you write on a piece of paper that is there. And so what you voted is it's a separate record. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. So, Dr. Swami, all these issues that we've been discussing, um, obviously, there's fundamentally there are some fundamental problems uh, that uh, over the last uh, 40, 50, 60 years we haven't addressed. That's why these corruption cases keep coming up, and they be get better. What is the better. fundamental problem? Um, like, for example, the, the people who are corrupt don't get prosecuted, or they get prosecuted. Why? So that's what I'm saying. Is there any way we can fix those fundamental yeah. problems? Short term or long term? Long term. <laughs> Long term, once again, imbibe Sanatana Dham. Why did Julia Roberts, uh, the richest woman uh, Hollywood actress, become Hindu? Have you read that? Yes. Yeah. You read what yeah, she yeah, said? Yeah, yeah. Why is that Rishi, Rishi Ravi Shankar's uh, and Baba Ramdev's and Sai Baba's, uh, all these ashrams are full of rich foreigners? They're they pour money, no wonder you open his bedroom, you'll get cash, they say. That is not corruption. If I, if, uh, corruption is only when I misuse public office to favor you. Yeah. But if somebody gives me cash, that's not corruption. But they expect you to do something. They give you cash. Did Sai Baba uh, uh, do money things for money? No, but Sai Baba is not a politician. The question is, is Sai Baba corrupt or not? No. no. Ramdev, Dibhuja Singh said Ramdev is corrupt because he takes money no. in cash. No. no. Is that corruption? No, no, no absolutely but not. How do you use that resource, you know? He uses it to build universities, uh, hospitals. Society. 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 He can take that money and buy it. And he is, he is giving accounts every year. Yeah. Even Shanti Ritambaraji, I remember that Vashtra Gram Param Shakti people, a lot of people. Yeah. He says, you know, yeah. he's working for the humanity. Yeah. No, no, absolutely. But you know, like, uh, I mean, uh, as a Congress is saying, extremist. No, they have say Congress is wrong. What do you expect? What's your short term? No, no, no. Uh, so, so, the long term, this materialistic outlook, one dimension of it, one materialistic outlook, that money is everything, is not uh, Sanatana Dharma. Sanatana Dharma has placed in apex those who have learning <coughs> and don't have anything for themselves. Mahatma Gandhi was your leader. I remember when I came as a student to Harvard for the first time as PhD, uh, one American student asked me, how can you have Mahatma Gandhi as your leader? So I said, why in America you not accept him? So he came to America, we put him in jail for indecent exposure. <laughs> <laughs> but then I thought, you know, this is fine, because in America the leader has to dress very well. But here this fellow is a piece of cloth and everybody is following him. <laughs> and he says, I don't want to be Prime Minister, I don't want to be MLA, I don't want to be MP. People are still following him. So what is that? That is Sanatana Dharma. Brahmins was, in the, the unfortunate sin is the Varna system got discredited because of birth, this connection with birth. But uh, Vishwamitra was a Maharishi, but he was not born in a Brahmin household. He was born in uh, Kshatriya. Valmiki was a Dalit. But Vedavasa's mother was a fisherwoman. Uh, that uh, um, um, uh, Kalidasa, he was a hunter. Ravan was a Brahmin. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that? Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> and, and Rama, as a Kshatriya, killed uh, a Brahmin. And the Brahmins uh, did not condemn Rama for that. But Rama, recognizing the Principle, he did Brahma Hatya Dosha Nivaran Puja in Rameshwar. Not uh, grieve for, uh, not prashtit for killing uh, Ravan, but for killing a Brahman. So that's how you, when it, the king, he had the king, but he can't make decisions in India. He couldn't make a decision on how to declare war, what punishment to give. He had to go to the Brahmin and ask him. I just have one little question. Yeah. You, you think that the, your, your statement that the establishment and the propagation of Sanatana Dharma is what will eventually save India? That's long term. What is, what is happening right now is the uh, mass conversion uh, with increasing in the percentage of population of the minorities in terms of the Christian numbers. 
that have already gone fairly high, and it will not, do you think we will survive? So all, they were all pejorative statements of yours. No, but I'm First of all, what is the population of Christians? Christians are well about maybe five, ten. <laughs> But they still own important position. In fact, oh, yeah, the whole yeah, they they was, I I mean, you, you accepted Sonia Gandhi. I, I, I got an email what? last week. There was huh? 70 yeah, million. Yeah, Even yeah, yeah. now, Kerala huh? chief minister is a Christian. 70 million out of 1.2 billion. Uh, no, not possible. But at the, at, the, at the top of the government right now, See, the case of Muslims, is, the population is increasing because of not conversion, but for two other reasons. One is they have a higher population not growth rate. And two, Bangladesh infiltration. These are two reasons for uh, the Muslim population. Yes, Muslim population, if they were 13% last census, they are going to be 15% this time. I think Christian population won't be changed. But uh, I, I doubt about it. I was also thinking that statistics say they are 3%. But when I went to our villages only recently. Which village? Uh, in Kamal district of Andhra Pradesh. Kamal. Uh, every village now has uh, at least that's one church. That's not but a, most of the that, that is not an education. Yep. Churches, yeah, you put in the good. internet that I want to build a church in my thing and they will send you money. Okay. Yeah, but that's I asked you, I put on the internet, I want to start Krishna TV, I'll get nothing. Right. No, no, but they did become uh, Christians. The reason is not How many? only it's okay. People, Andhra, Andhra conversion is no, very high. Tamil Nadu also. Tamil Nadu is Andhra. Yeah. We actually, Tamil Nadu, we have, re, we have started reconverting back. Yeah. Okay. In tsunami, it was a failure. See, many of these reports you don't get it there. But so uh, you're, not, you're not concerned about that? I am. <laughs> but not the way you are concerned. No, but you see. Yeah. You are concerned is, oh, they are coming, they are going swarming, and I am, you know, I am surrounded. And not that way. I go into the mentality, you see. And what is in your the case of the Muslim mentality, if in any place they are in a majority, they will not tolerate you. They are in a majority in Saudi Arabia, they, they cannot celebrate Diwali. They cannot build a, a temple. They can't even carry a photograph of Ramchandaji in their pocket. 